First, we have Rolls-Royce, who plans to release their first EV. They're calling it the Spectre. What we know so far is it's a four-seat fastback coupe that comes equipped with a dual-motor electric powertrain that provides 577 horsepower and 666 pound-feet of torque, which should get the rolls up to 60 miles an hour in a claimed 4.4 seconds. It weighs in at a hefty 6,500 pounds, it's almost 18 feet long and 7 feet wide, so it's quite the sizable machine. Rolls-Royce says the first cars will reach customers in late 2023. The styling is unmistakable Rolls-Royce with an enormous signature grille and squared off front end design. The 116 year old automaker claims that it is the most aerodynamic Rolls ever. I can't wait to see one of these in the flesh. Continuing with EV news, GMC plans to roll out an all new GMC Sierra EV in 2024. GMC claims it will have 754 horsepower and an estimated 400 miles of range. And the edition one like this one on the screen will be coming out to almost $109,000, yikes. The Edition 1 will only be available as a crew cab with all-wheel drive, and GMC claims it will do 0-60 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Think of it as a more utility-friendly, less extreme version of the electric Hummer on which it's loosely based. That has 1,000 horsepower and weighs almost 10,000 pounds. The Sierra EV and its brother, the Silverado EV, will come with a 200 kilowatt battery pack under the floor and an 800 volt electrical architecture, which has charging capability of up to 350 kilowatts. What that means to us mere mortals is that it can add 100 miles of range theoretically in about 10 minutes. Future models will be available with different ranges, tow ratings, and cab configurations. The truck will also be able to use General Motors Super Cruise hands-free driving system while towing, which is pretty neat. The interior is obviously updated and comes with a 16.8 inch display that can be reconfigured. And good news, there's a physical volume knob as well as toggle switches for different functions. Because as far as I'm concerned, using a screen for everything is a total pain. Good on GMC. As exciting as new technology is, let's get back to internal combustion. The new Z06 is here, and it's here with a bang. It has a naturally aspirated, hand-built, 5.5-liter flat-plane V8 that screams to 60 in 2.6 seconds. Easy for me to say. And good news, it only starts at $109,000. Now I know that number might sound a little bit crazy, but it's the performance bargain of a century as far as I'm concerned. The gem in the Corvette is the 5.5 liter flat plane V8, which revs to 8,500 RPM and produces 670 horsepower. It's mated to an eight speed dual clutch automatic gearbox and rear wheel drive only. A blast through the quarter mile takes only 10 and a half seconds at over 130 miles per hour. And it's not only a performer, it comes with plenty of features, including an eight inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a Wi-Fi hotspot. It also offers two separate Bose stereo systems, one with 10 speakers and one with 14. It's a lot of speakers in such a small space if you ask me, but I'm sure it sounds great. I am really looking forward to seeing one of these, and more importantly, hearing one of these on the road. Porsche recently announced a new variant of the 992911 model with the Carrera T. Think of it as a base engine 911 with lots of Porsche performance goodies for a not so eye-watering price. The T is a rear wheel drive 911 with a manual transmission that has a rear seat to lead, and it comes with the base 911's turbo engine. The Carrera T also has thinner glass, a smaller battery, and that all-important 7-speed manual transmission. It claims to be 100 pounds lighter than the regular Carrera, and that regular base Carrera is actually only offered with an 8-speed PDK, although the PDK can be added to the T as a no-charge option. The 3-liter twin-turbo flat 6 makes 379 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque. You can get from 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds with the manual, or 3.8 seconds with the PDK. Both actually have the identical top speed of 181 miles per hour. Compared with the regular Carrera, the T has a mechanical limited slip differential and Porsche's active suspension management with specifically tuned dampers. It wears a set of gray 20 inch wheels in the front and 21 inch in the rear, the front's wearing a 245 section tire and the rear's at a nice wide 305. This enthusiast spec 911 hits showroom spring of next year and I really hope I get to drive one. Sticking with Porsche, I have exciting news from the Nürburgring. The new 992 GT3 RS just lapped the famous German racetrack faster than the old Porsche GT2 RS at a mere six minutes and 44.8 seconds. To put that in perspective, the GT2 RS is pretty much a rear wheel drive 911 turbo with all the GT3 goodies. The new GT3 RS has a glorious naturally aspirated engine, which makes the feat all that more impressive due to its crazy engineering and unbelievable downforce. 
Now, for those of you who don't know about the Nürburgring, it's considered to be the world's most dangerous and demanding road course, which got its nickname the Green Hell. In Germany's Eiffel Mountains, it's a 12.9 mile circuit with over 70 corners and most of them very high speed. It also gains and loses about a thousand feet of elevation over the lap. If you have a chance to hop on YouTube, check out the GT3 RS with Porsche's driver Jörg Bergmeister behind the wheel. It's really incredible. To round out the news, we have Cadillac's new flagship sedan, the Celestic. The Celestic has a striking presence and a sweeping fastback roofline. The cabin, in my opinion, is arguably the party piece. With a 55-inch wide digital dashboard, that's right, 55 inches, and four leather bucket seats. The Celestic assembly line will be manned by a small team of craft people who will hand build each car to order, much like a Rolls Royce. And for a starting price of $300,000, one would hope so. Each one will come with a dual motor, all wheel drive electric powertrain, which Cadillac estimates will make around 600 horsepower and should be able to get the Caddy up to 60 miles per hour in 3.8 seconds. Its adaptive air suspension is standard and rear wheel steering is a feature that will help the super long sedan maneuver around tight spaces. The Cadillac has about a 300 mile range and they claim can charge up to 78 miles in just about 10 minutes. And did I mention the 55 inch infotainment screen spanning the entire width of the car's dashboard? It's pretty insane. Lastly, the Celestic boasts a 38 speaker AKG studio reference stereo with 3D surround. Really looking forward to seeing one of these in person to see what I think of that fastback roofline. For now, I think it's pretty neat. And that concludes this week's news.